The Chilki NT75 is well regarded in the community as being one of the best new budget pre-builds for you to pick up. But is it really that good or is it just overhyped? They sent this keyboard over to me for my honest review, so that is exactly what we're gonna do. The keyboard starts off at a price point of 99 US dollars, but is on sale for 89 US dollars at the moment. It has four different color options, jet black, mountain blue, elegant purple, which I have here today, in pure white. The other nice feature is that you can choose whether or not you want your PCB to include flex cuts. And if you're unaware, flex cuts are basically small thin cuts into the PCB that give you more bounce, but there is sort of a downside as they may make the keyboard sound thinner. Another thing to mention is it is a 75% layout. It does have tri-mode connectivity and it does feature a small tiny screen. We'll get into that in a bit. Inside the box, you get the keyboard itself, a manual, some screws, some gaskets, and you also get the 2.4 Hertz dongle for that tri-mode connectivity. The keyboard specs are pretty standard, I'd say. It's CNC aluminum, comes with a polycarbonate plate, but what it does feature is something that I personally like, and that is the quick assembly method. Meaning, to take this keyboard apart and to put it back together, it does not have any screws or require any screws, as you can just pop the top off just like you could on the Cycle 7. The reason why this quick assembly is important, especially for this type of keyboard, is because this keyboard has three different mounting styles. It has the split O-ring, which is what it comes with, silica gel gaskets, and you can top mount it. The stabilizers included are plate mounted, unfortunately. That does make it easier if you did want to lube them or modify them, but for me personally, mine came pretty well lubed and tuned, so I didn't have to do any modifications to them. The switches are Gateron EF Dopamine Blue Linears. They are pretty much just your standard linear. You know, nothing really crazy about them. And the keycaps that it comes with are Double Shot PBT Cherry Profile keycaps. The quality is there. The color scheme matches the keyboard color perfectly. And I really don't have any issues with the keycaps. You know, they're great. And the thickness is pretty good for the price as well. So overall, this keyboard has a lot of pros. And that is why people are raving about it. But I do think there are some things that are worth mentioning that could be a potential deal breaker to some buyers. So let's get into those. First things first, this keyboard is cheap in comparison to other aluminum keyboards and the way they cut costs is obviously by the quality of the aluminum and just the overall build quality in general. Now this is a cheaper aluminum and you can see that when it comes to the sharp edges, you know, on the back of the weight, especially on the corner that kind of like flips up and has that angle piece where the USB-C cable goes, it is very sharp. And you know, you could honestly probably cut someone with it if you're not too careful. Not all the edges are sharp, but some of them are. And if you're not a big fan of, I guess, lower quality aluminum, then this might not be the best option for you. Another thing to mention is because it has a screen on it, when you go to take apart the quick release assembly, there is a potential danger that you could rip the ribbon cable that connects the screen to the keyboard. So in general, I think they should have gone more of the knob route over the screen because of that issue and because it is a quick release board, I don't think the screen is that well thought out in terms of execution. The last thing I wanted to mention is the fact that there is no slot on this keyboard for the 2.4 Hertz dongle. You need to have a spot on the keyboard itself to put the dongle when it's not in use because if you lose this, there is no replacing it. With that all being said, here's the sound test you guys can hear how it sounds.
When it comes to the sound department, I do think it sounds pretty generic and the gasket feel with the split o-ring, which is what I'm using, is okay. You know, it's nothing crazy. The flex is not amazing, but that's also because it has PE foam, case foam, and plate foam pre-installed and that could be easily removed or modified and changed with that easy disassembly feature. So overall, I do think this keyboard has a lot of pros, but there are those cons that could be a potential deal breaker depending on your use case so they are definitely worth thinking about before purchasing if you are interested in the chill keys nd75 i'll be leaving a link to it in the description below for you to check out let me know what you guys thought about this keyboard in the comments down below and i'll see you guys in the next one peace